Okay guys, welcome to our summer camp. So today we are going to jump straight in. Um, first things first, I want to make sure we all know what's on our course and what we're actually, you know, need to focus in on, I suppose, so that you're going to do well um, at the start of next year. And what the aim, I suppose, is of what I'm trying to achieve with you this week. I suppose with me here, we're looking to give you a leg up going back into six. You're that you're gonna go in. You're not gonna go in cold. First of all, because you know you've done a bit of work during the summer. And second of all, the stuff that we do is going to be uh, of a very high standard. The notes and the work that you get off me will be tricky, uh, very manageable. They're doable, but the stuff will be tricky. The essays, especially, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes, the essays are of a very high standard. You're asked for a leaving cert to write 650 words for an essay. The essays I give you will have close to 1,200 words. And I don't expect you to learn all of that, but the reason is I'm giving you a huge volume of content that you can then decide which bits you like or don't like, and more importantly, if you find out that there's two or three other boys or girls from your school doing this course. Uh, the one thing I remember in school was this teacher handed out an essay and it was very, very good. Um, and then everyone used the exact same essay. It's not that good anymore because if 25 people have the exact same thing word for word. Number one looks absolutely fantastic, and number 25 looks absolutely shit because I've read the same thing again and again and again. Even my own uh, tests here in sixth year, sometimes when students learn exactly word for word what I give them, and they all do it in the study group together, sometimes you can be like, look, it's less impressive. So that's why I'm giving you so much content that your work will all seem different from one another. It doesn't matter if there's 10 of you doing this course or if there's only one of you doing it, so that your work will stand out because at the end of the day, you're not against um, everyone in this room, you're only against the people that are in your batch of exams, so your classmates in school, not the people that are, let's say, doing this course or let's say they're in grind with us, but the people that sit and the schools around you as well. People sit beside you in school, your year group and the schools around you. That's your batch of exams, but you're going to be marked against really, to be honest. So let's start off here with the, the big handout, the one that the Irish guy you're written on it in a, an unusual way. We're going to start there with Lagan Amok and Corsa, the layout of the course. So this is on page three. Okay? Lagan Amok and Corsa. So we've got the Screw Do Bale. We've got Filiot Pros. So I've given you nicer detailed notes there on page three if you want to have a look at them. But this is me just breaking down the exam, right? That's your exam, very, very simply. I put Ashley down, there are other options instead of doing an essay, but paper one is basically just an essay or a debate. That's what it is. You have an hour and 50 minutes to write one question. So you actually have too much time, you will never be stuck for time on paper one. The only difference is, um, is that you need to make sure your accuracy and your vocabulary is very, very good. Then you've got your tape. Tape will come just a little bit before that. Um, again, tape's the same for everyone, but 30 minutes, you do the tape exam, you do your best with that. We're not going to do too much practice on tape in this course, we're going to focus more on the screw the bell side of things. You'll get plenty of practice with tapes in school, and I think if you're watching this on camera, me saying go off and do a tape is not that beneficial. It's better to be actually teaching, working through things. So that's paper one basically with the tape included. Leif Hishkind, you get two reading comprehensions to do. All the answers for these are on the paper in front of you. So what you need to get good at doing very quickly at the start of fifth year or the start of sixth year, depending on what you're going into, you need to be very, very good at learning a skill or a technique called basically finding the answers. You don't have to understand everything in this. For junior cert level, you were asked to change your answers for your reading comprehension. You're asked to 
you know, if it says, um, you know, Tame Gama, you might say Tame Muhu Gama, I'm feeling good instead of saying I am good. In higher level Irish, amazingly, they don't ask you to change the answers. They don't ask you to change anything. They literally say to you, copy and paste. Find the answer in the piece and just write it down. So all you're doing is copying, like a word search, that's what they call it. There's a 6A and a 6B question at the end where you have to give opinions on that. Now we won't worry about too much, we won't worry about them too much today. There's something you'd usually do later into sixth year, I suppose, uh, or later into fifth year. For, for now, I'm just gonna focus a little bit on the layout of them. I haven't actually put too many of them into your notes at all. Reason being is that they're usually a thing that people do well uh, in because their teachers give them a lot of them in school. They're very easy to do for a teacher in school because they just hand out a comprehension, they say there's the answers with them. The best thing I could give you tips on them to do is when you are doing these questions, make sure you time yourself. You have 40 minutes in the exam to do each one of them, so 80 minutes total. So if you can do one perfectly in an hour, that's not good. You're 20 minutes over the time limit. So make sure you're always keeping an eye on the clock. The first one you do, you're never going to get to 40 minutes. However, you should be trying to get quicker and quicker and quicker every time you do them. That's the aim, 40 minutes per one. Pros, we're gonna do two this week. Philia, poetry, we're gonna do two this week. Pros is just like the same as English, P-R-O-S-E, except it's just basically short stories. Literary expression, your extra literacy question can be one of numerous things. That's why we're not going to look at it at all in our course here over the coming week. That can be on Trail, Goffa, a Higna, Hit Durham, and there's like five or six different things you can choose from. We here in our school always do on Trail, um, but we're not going to look at it this week because, for example, we've plenty of other stuff that we can keep us busy for the week. And let's say I'm doing on Trail with you, and you go back to school and you're not doing on Trail at all, you might say it was a waste. So we're going to focus on thing on on things that are guaranteed in the exam. On trail is not a guarantee. It, you will get a guaranteed question, but there's no guarantee you're gonna do it in school. So then focus on the stuff that aren't optional. Up here, your screw the bail, your exam. So I, I do the Irish Orals. I'm an Irish Oral examiner for the SEC. So I'm gonna try talk you through about what's good, what's bad, what you need to work on, what we're going to try and avoid. So this is worth 240 marks. That's 40%. How do I know that? Because your exam's at a 600. Okay, so 240 marks is 40% of the overall grade. You'll do that exam in the March, start of April, so you'll have 40% of Irish done. Take into account the tape is worth 60 marks, that's 10%. So between the listening and the spoken skills of the exam is worth 50%. So the written stuff where you'll spend 95% of your time on in schools is only worth 50% of the marks. That's why when we're here in our day school, we have four classes of Irish a week. We spent two of them just doing the Irish oral. And this year, obviously, there was no Irish orals, but the year before that, we had 26 students, and I think it was 50, get a H1, get 90 or above. Um, so it really does work. It's worth putting the time in. Big thing you're gonna hear a lot about, and you probably have already, is about the bell curve. What is the bell curve? What does that mean for exam results? What's going on? Basically, that means that there's a certain amount of people that can get a H1 in every subject every year. So for example, I think in maths, it's 2% of the country get a H1. So 60,000 students, whatever that may be, 12,000 will get a H1. Um, so look, why does that affect you? I always say to students, if you have time, up to March, up to April, put a lot of your time and effort into the school debate, and you can't neglect everything else here. But in this question here, when I do the exams, Nobody has ever told me about a bell curve in the Irish oral exam. It doesn't exist. It doesn't happen. So they just say, give the students whatever marks they deserve. In every other project, in every other part of the Leaving Cert course all around the country, apart from the music practical and these Irish oral exams, there is no bell curve, which means technically if there's 100 people in this room about to sit the Irish oral, 100 people can get a H1, and there's no problem with that. If 100 people need to sit this paper and everyone deserves a H1, they will find a way to mark the weaker H1s down to a H2 and so on. They'll keep knocking people down the list. That's the way the bell curve operates. That's what I was saying to you before, that you're against the people around you. But with the school do bell, the Irish oral exam, there is no bell curve and therefore you can get all 40% and you can have passed the exam before you go in. If you get a H1 in the Irish oral, now they don't tell you this till after you get your results, but for some students, let's say one of my students last year got 98% in the Irish oral. She had passed the Irish paper. It's 35% to pass higher Irish. She was going into the exam at 39. She had passed the paper before she put a pen to the exam, which is a wonderful position to be in. Now, you don't know that at the time, but you're pretty confident coming out what you did well on. 
We're going to give you a couple of tips here this week on what you should be studying, how you should be studying, what you should be doing, and how to make, I suppose, your workload a little bit lighter. This is a 15-minute spoken exam.